FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it is August 22nd, 2017, post-eclipse day. And we've been encountering a bit of a racial eclipse here in the U.S. Well, Charlottesville, you all know about it. David Horowitz is here to discuss now. And as always, questions, comments, email me at kl at kerrylutz.com. David, good morning. Good morning. Hey, so we we saw this whole Charlottesville thing blow up, and I'm smelling set up here. I don't believe it's real. I think it was contrived and created by the media and uh, perhaps uh, some other nefarious deal uh, forces. What is your take on the whole thing? Well, it's just a big fake news event. Um, the left needs an enemy, so they concoct one. I mean, look, these idiots from the alt right who went there. They applied for a permit. First of all, it was a national demonstration of only 500 of them, and there were, what, 20,000 or 10,000 yeah. counter-protesters. So this is a piddling, marginal group in society, and they obviously are brainless. Yeah. Um, you can't march alongside neo-Nazis and not considered you know, supporters of them. Yeah. Um, but they applied for a permit. You know, if they intended violence, you think they would apply for a permit and put their names and addresses and whatever you have to put down? So they, they came for an obvious reason to defend the statue that the left wanted torn down. The yeah. left showed up in force, and the left is violent. And a fight, you know, the, 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 not that the neo-Nazis didn't come with, uh, you know, uh, clubs uh, expecting violence. But it takes two to tango. And, uh, you know, there's no heroes out there. And then you have millions of people virtue signaling. Oh, yeah, we're, we're against the Nazis. Yeah. You know, wake up, people. We defeated the Nazis uh, 70 years ago. There's no Nazi in Congress. There's no Nazi in the city, you know, and, and the Senate. There's no Nazi elected official. Uh, it, they, you couldn't name, you know, two neo-Nazis if you had to, the, whose names weren't. Maybe you could name David Duke, who nobody follows. Yeah. And uh, you, you might, if you're really erudite, know the name Richard Spencer. These right. are nobodies. And they're, they're made important by the media and by the left. The left needs them to justify its violence. The, the Boston demonstration was even more ridiculous. There were like about 12 people huddled in a pagoda with 40,000 people screaming hate at them. They had to be escorted out by the cops. And I saw one picture of that group and they were holding up six signs, all of which said, Black Lives Do Matter. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, surreal. What's what's going on? Uh, you know, I, I was just I, I was watching. Uh, um, I will never do this again. Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC last night. Hopefully, not on a full Trump stomach. Speech. Right, not on a full stomach. And he referred to Breitbart as daily spewing hate. <laughs> now I read Breitbart daily. Yeah. And there's a lot of articles. I didn't see, I haven't seen in six, the last six months of when I started watching it, uh, any hate. Yeah. So, you know, it's just the, the lying, you know, that goes on on the left is so monstrous. Uh, you know, I love that Trump has taken on fake news. But, you know, it's worse than fake. He's right. The, the, the MSNBC is an enemy of the American people. You can't get any news from them. Well, that's actual news. That's for sure. Well, David, we got we got the media that's the enemy of the people. And we have our U.S. Congress and much of the U.S. government that are the enemies of the people. Where are the people supposed to get solace, reclaim their rights, and make this country work again? Well, I think... First of all, we have to call things by their right name. Left-wing fascists have to be uh, attacked as such, denounced as such. Black Lives Matter is a racist, fascist organization. That its icon is a communist named Masada Shakur, who murdered a police officer, executed him while right. he was on the ground. Just um, 
Antifa is a fascist movement. These are the brown shirts. I mean, Hitler was a left-wing movement. There was a socialist for crying out tears. Yeah, gun control and all that, right? So, yeah. So call the spade a spade, as it were. But uh, we're like drowning here. The country is drowning because at least I don't think most of the country is buying the propaganda about this, that we're a racist nation and that somehow uh, the neo-Nazis are about to take over again. But it's becoming a uh, rallying cry, if you will, to uh, to really enslave the rest of humanity. Yep. Right. That's that's exactly right. I mean, what's what's needed is for conservatives, patriots to get engaged in the battle. There's a lot more of us. And, uh, you know, Trump showed that uh, when you take them on, you can get the support that, that wins. Yeah, that, that's usually important. Yeah. Um, conservatives are way too polite. Well, well, conservatives too, have too lives. <laughs> Right. We have lives as conservatives uh, speaking collectively. I'm kind of a libertarian, but but we have lives. We have things that are important to us. We don't live for politics and for demonstrations for the next one. Right. So we're at a, a real disadvantage here, aren't we? Well, we're at a disadvantage, but the biggest disadvantage that I see, I mean, people, you know, you can complain about all sorts of things, a, a horrific media uh, to begin with. Um, a, a, you know, a Democratic Party whose leaders lie with uh, straight faces all the time. Um, but the biggest handicap that conservatives have is that they don't like politics. Um, and then when they get engaged in, because it's dirty, which it is, and when they get engaged in politics, they're way too polite. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think what Trump showed, I mean, let, let's put it another way. Let, let, I'll give an example. I, I wrote this book called Big Agenda, Trump's Plan to Save America. And in it, I just, I, I recall this moment in the debates uh, where Trump looked Hillary Clinton in the eye and said, in front of 50 million people, and said, you are a liar and a crook, which he is both. <laughs> yeah. But you couldn't name me another Republican um, elected no. official who would ever say that to Hillary because she's a woman. Yeah. They're all bound by political correctness. They would never say it to any and, Democrat. They never say it. They yeah, never said so it to Trump has shown that what you can change yeah. the dynamics of everything by speaking up. Yeah. I mean, when did you ever hear a Republican say to any Democrat or anyone, you're a liar and a thief? But yet the Democrats do it all the time. What about this uh, exact, state senator? Exactly. What about the state senator in Missouri who uh, basically said that Trump should be assassinated? Uh, that actually got the Democratic Party to denounce her, although I think with crocodile tears. But mm -hmm. uh, she's going to be gone at some point. I don't see how they can allow her to stay around. Do you? Um, well, you never know. But I, I, I kind of agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that was just they pushed it and they pushed it and then they pushed it too far. Jump the shark. Yeah. Yeah. So so looking to the future, how do you get people involved who really just want to go about your own business, live your life, raise your kids? You can't you can't do that anymore. Then we're in a battle for the for this country and people have to get involved. They have to get out there and defend um they have mm. to defend Trump. They have to defend what's right. We need borders. Mm. We need to fight the terrorists. Um we need to uh defend the police and not the criminals. Um, these are all battles that people can get involved in. Hey, that was another thing in Charlottesville. The cops just, uh, I guess, just stepped aside and let the violence uh, start. Um, how, how did they get away with this? Well, that's because of the left wing mayors. Yeah. Every city in America of any size is controlled by the, by the left Democrats. Mm. That's why there's so much crime there. And they're failing, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's why these cities are failing, yeah. Yeah, name me a democratic city that's prospering and succeeding. I mean, I guess you could say Seattle, perhaps, or but even still, there's these problems, homelessness, and uh, just the general uh, moral decay in these cities that uh, is really quite shocking. And it's virtually every major city in the country. It is. Every killing field yeah. is 100% controlled by the Democratic Party. 
Yeah. Uh, New Orleans, Detroit, Chicago. Uh, you go down the list uh, one after the other. And what do they have in common? Uh, yeah, generally, they have bad weather, rest, rust belt. But they <laughs> have, have basically had a Democratic mayor for several generations. Detroit, 1962, I think the last Republican mayor fled. 61. Six, I'm sorry, off by a year. 1961, Detroit yeah. was the richest city in America. Yeah, and it took now them. Now it's one of the poorest. Yeah, amazing, isn't That's it? That's all due to the Democrats. Yeah, for sure. So, so it's it's really it's not just a fight for political survival; it's economic survival, and really, uh, you know, your your family's uh, livelihood. I think that's where the Republicans have failed in framing the debate. It's not just a matter of uh, a little bit less First Amendment, a little bit more Second Amendment. Everything will balance out. This is an existential battle that we're going through right now. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. That's what that's what it's about. I, I wrote about this in the book. I wrote Big Agenda for people who are interested. It's really about who the left is, who the Democratic Party is, why Trump is the antidote, uh-huh. um, why political correctness is really a communist party line that, well, yeah, prevents Republicans from looking Hillary Clinton in the eye and saying you're a liar and a crook. And because worse. he's a woman. She's and a worse. protected species. It's also, <laughs> the left is also driven by racism. Uh, oh, the phrase time. people of color is a racist term. It's yeah. not English. We don't say, here's a box of crayons of color, do we? <laughs> it's completely <laughs> ideologically made up. And what it yeah. does is it divides the world into people of color uh, who are oppressed, uh, allegedly, and uh, white people. Those are the bad guys who yeah. oppress them. But mm-hmm. if you think about it for a second, uh, Maharajas in India, they're people of color. Mm. Um, African despots, they're people of color. Uh, Islamic beheaders in Syria, they're people of color. Mm-hmm. So it's a, just a term, people of color is a term to say white people are racist, oppressors, supremacists, and all this other garbage. Ugh. It is pure racism, and it, it has totally infected the Democratic Party. Yeah, it is the Democratic Party. You know, David, if you look back, you you look back at Obama's family history, they were slave owners. I mean, the Arabs in Africa were slave, were the slavers. They were the ones that were selling the slaves. There were more African slaves uh, in the Muslim slave trade than in the Atlantic slave trade. And You know, slavery existed in Africa for a thousand years before a white person ever set foot there. And, you know, white people didn't go into Africa and throw nets over uh, free Africans and enslave them. They bought them and, Mm. you know, slave, you know, slave docks. And uh, Ghana, I mean, they, you know, they, they were enslaved by blacks. Of course. And sold. Now, that doesn't justify slavery. But no. the fact is that every black in America, every single black in America owes his or her freedom to Thomas Jefferson and the whites in America who ended slavery after 3,000 years of everybody accepting it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's Jefferson and, and it was English Christians as well, Wilberforce, who yeah. said slavery is immoral. Those weren't black people, they were white people. Mm-hmm. And the 350,000 Union soldiers who died, there were, uh, I mean, there's a great film about it, Glory. There were uh, black soldiers, but the majority were white. Mm-hmm. History is just much more complicated uh, than the left. Of course, the left is, they're racist, that's what they are. Yeah, and then it's all a case anyway, of projection, right? <laughs> just a big yeah. case of projection. Well, well, David, we always appreciate right, I, I, it. Yeah, we appreciate your coming on the show. Uh, yeah, the... I appreciate it. I, I have to go now. Understand. But, um, I have a website at frontpagemagazine.com. All right, frontpagemag.com. We love it. David, thanks so much for coming on. Keep up the fight. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. 
put down. So they, they came for an obvious reason to defend the statue that the mm. left wanted torn down. The yeah. left showed up in force, and the left is violent. And a fight, you know, the, 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 not that the neo-Nazis didn't come with, uh, you know, uh, clubs uh, expecting violence. But it takes two to tango. And, uh, you know, there's no heroes out there. And then you have millions of people virtue signaling. Oh, yeah, we're, we're against the Nazis. Yeah. You know, wake up, people. We defeated the Nazis uh, 70 years ago. There's no Nazi in Congress. There's no Nazi in the city, you know, in, in the Senate. There's no Nazi elected official. Uh, it, they, you couldn't name, you know, two neo-Nazis if you had to, the, whose names weren't. Maybe you could name David Duke, who nobody follows. Yeah. And uh, you, you might if you're really erudite. No. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and it is August 22nd, 2017, post-eclipse day. And we've been encountering a bit of a racial eclipse here in the U.S. Well, Charlottesville, you all know about it. David Horowitz is here to discuss now. And as always, questions, comments, email me at kl at kerrylutz.com. David, good morning. Good morning. Hey, so we we saw this whole Charlottesville thing blow up, and I'm smelling set up. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of articles. I didn't see. I haven't seen in six the last six months of when I started watching it uh, any hate. Yeah. So you know, it's just the, the the lying you know that goes on on the left is so monstrous. Uh, you know, I love that. Trump has taken on fake news, but, you know, it's worse than fake. He's right. The, the, the MSNBC is an enemy of the American people. You can't get any news from them. Well, that's actual news. That's for sure. Well, David, we got we got the media that's the enemy of the people, and we have our U.S. Congress and much of the U.S. government that are the enemies of the people. Where are the people supposed to get solace, reclaim their rights, and make this country work again? Well, I think... Person. up here i don't believe it's real i think it was contrived and created by the media and uh, perhaps uh, some other nefarious deal uh, forces what is your take on the whole thing well it's just a big fake news event um the left needs an enemy and so they concoct one i mean they, look these idiots from the alt right who went there they applied for a permit First of all, it was a national demonstration, only 500 of them, and there were, what, 20,000 or 10,000 yeah. counter-protesters. So this is a piddling, marginal group in society, and they obviously are brainless. Yeah. Um, you can't march alongside neo-Nazis and not consider you know, supporters of them. Yeah. Um, but they applied for a permit. Now, if they intended violence, you think they would apply for a permit and put their names and addresses and whatever? You have to pull the name Richard Spencer. These right. are nobodies. And they're, they're made important by the media and by the left. The left needs them to mm -hmm. justify its violence. The, the Boston demonstration was even more ridiculous. There were like about 12 people huddled in a pagoda with 40,000 people screaming hate at them. They had to be escorted out by the cops. And I saw one picture of that group and they were holding up six signs, all of which said, black lives do matter. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, surreal what's what's going on. Uh, you know, I, I was just I, I was watching. Uh, um, I will never do this again. Lawrence O'Donnell on MSNBC last night. Hopefully not on a full Trump stomach. Speech. Right. Not on a full stomach. And he referred to Breitbart as daily spewing hate. Now, I read Breitbart daily. Yeah. 